CO2 for beginners! I'm guessing the real reason you're here is because you want to up your aquarium game. So start by leaving a comment and don't forget to subscribe. If you've never done CO2 before, yes, it can look really hard and scary, and that's true because it can kill your fish. But don't worry, because I read through a bunch of instructions and watched a bunch of videos. So now I can basically just show you how to set up a CO2 system so your plants can grow bigger and healthier. There will also be a link in the description for all the supplies that I used in the CO2 setup. The first thing you're going to need is two 2 liter soda bottles and you're going to label those A and B. Trust me, that will save you a lot of stress. After you've done that, put 200 grams or 13 tablespoons of citric acid in a bowl. Fill up a separate container full of 13 tablespoons or 200 grams of baking soda. Now, I don't have an actual funnel, so I just made one out of paper. But if you so happen to be lucky enough to have a funnel, go ahead and use that by all means. Place your citric acid in bottle A because A is for acid. Eh? Get it? See what I did there? Eh? 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 Then place your baking soda in your B bottle because that's for baking soda, right? After you have added your baking soda and citric acid, you're going to take 200 milliliters and add that to your B bottle. First, when I dumped in the water, I was expecting some sort of reaction and I was like, gotta close it off really fast, but no, you don't have to. There's no reaction. Just make sure you shake it up really, really good because you want that baking soda to be mixed up pretty good. After you've done that and shaked it like really, really fast, you can move on to your A bottle. You're going to need 600 milliliters of water for your A bottle. Now you don't quite have to mix your A bottle as thoroughly as the B bottle. In fact, you probably shouldn't even shake it. Just kind of like stir it around a bit until it's all dissolved. This is the part where you can grab all your tubing and other weird stuff. Take your A bottle and start screwing on the pressure gauge. This is what tells you what the pressure in your soda bottle is. Then you're going to take your B bottle and attach the thing that's called the trimmer valve. This is what turns on and off the CO2. Then you can add one end of the airline tubing to your trimmer valve. You can also use the magnet to pull the acid absorbing ball in and out of the solution. It should normally be in the solution to start the reaction and when the pressure is in the green scale. It should be out of the solution when you need to stop the reaction. Now we'll move on to starting the reaction and creating the pressure in both the bottles. This took me so long to figure out, but basically what you do is you spin your B bottle around, then you squeeze the A bottle, and then you go all the way up to the trimmer valve on the B bottle, and open it up, let the liquid go into B bottle or whatever, then close it really fast once you see the liquid moving, and then spin your B bottle around a little bit more, and that's what builds up all the pressure in A bottle, and that took me so long to figure out. But once you do it enough, and it shouldn't take that long, and you see that your pressure gauge is in the green zone, you're good to go. And finally, you can get out that awesome looking CO2 diffuser. I don't know why, but they just look so professional. You can attach that to the other end of the airline tubing and put both the bottles underneath your fish tank. Now is when you can slowly start turning that trimmer valve to let CO2 in. You can kind of adjust it to however you want, but just make sure that you're not overdosing. Speaking of overdosing, if you overdose, it can actually kill your fish. And you will have no way to tell if you're overdosing unless you get something that's called a CO2 indicator. As always, I'll leave a link into the description of the one I use, but really you can just use any one. But for this one, you're gonna twist off the top, find the top, and then use the CO2 indicator solution and put a few drops inside. And you can just pop it back together and stick it inside your tank. This will be able to tell you, hey, you're overdosing and your fish are gonna die, or hey, you're underdosing and your plants are gonna die. Simple way to put it, yellow's too much, green's just good, and blue's not enough. If you're underdosing your CO2, you probably don't have to worry about it running during the night. But if it is running during the night and you're kind of worried about that, you can get an air pump. I won't waste any time explaining how to assemble this air pump because that's pretty basic stuff. So by adding this timer and an air pump, you're not gassing your fish at night anymore. If you're dosing a lot, plants don't do photosynthesis at night, which means you're just gassing them, so adding extra oxygen and surface agitation will be the key to fixing that problem. Compared to most CO2 options, which can range to be above $100, this one I'm pretty sure was under $50, so that's not too bad. So even though CO2 may look scary and hard, <laughs> it's actually not because I was able to figure it out. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!